pastoral and preaching office is exclusively for the men, Paul says. Just as you would assume if you were reading everything we've just read and now you're asked, now who preaches in the Bible? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 to 15. Line by line, here's what it says. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. Now, what, is, what does that mean? Is we've, he's just said quiet and submissive. It doesn't mean silent and unseen. It means quiet in respect to teaching, not teaching. And then submissive in the area of authority, not authoritative. We know that's exactly what he means when he says quiet and submissive means not teaching and not in authority because he clarifies by saying, I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she's to remain quiet, which what we've just said, a bunch of the guys do on a Sunday as well. Remain quiet and learn. Don't rise up as teacher or authoritative. For, here's his reasoning, Adam was formed first and then Eve. So he's just doing what we did at the beginning of this talk. Don't you look at Genesis and see the order of creation and the responsibility in creation and the image of God in creation and come away with the conclusion, Paul's saying, that he's the mission leader, that he's the one in authority, that he's supposed to be the teacher. Don't you see that? He's saying, for Adam was formed first, not Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. In other words, she stepped from her area of calling, which is her strength. We don't get to say, well, I've got strengths that are outside of my calling. We're only ever in our strengths when we're under the right calling. She stepped from her strength, which was in the calling of wife, helpmate, homemaker, and tried to become authoritative teacher. And so down the dominoes went. She went from her place of strength to her point of weakness. She was not created to be the disputant and the teacher and the authoritative protector. That was Adam. This is the perfect, therefore, he just goes to the perfect, unarguable example of what will happen when God's gender roles are ignored. Yet, verse 15 says, yet she, you thought I was going to skip this one, yet she will be saved along with childbearing if they continue in the faith and, loves, and love and holiness with self-control. If she doesn't aim at the weak point, which is supposed to be the man's strong point, she doesn't sin by, by, by bucking off God's created gender roles, and she stays in her strength, that's the thing that women are saved along with. Uh, in other words, that's the good fruit that comes out of a genuinely saved heart. Just as we would never say a man is walking in his, uh, working out his salvation with fear and trembling, where he's stepping back, where he's being feminine, where he's not protecting, leading, and teaching, so also the woman is not that either when she is outside. And therefore, the next verse literally starts going to the qualities that men should have to be pastors. So he goes from saying, women, don't be like Eve, stay in your calling and strength, to then saying, men, don't be like Adam, step up into your calling and strength. It is the clearest of all the cultural issues, I think, of our day.